Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. We're gonna be talking about, well, Unity. Now I know over the past few weeks, my video output on this channel hasn't been quite as much as what I would like to have it at, but I do have some really cool things in the works and you're gonna be seeing some, you know, all the awesome things that I've been working on very, very soon. Um, but I do wanna get back into making more videos about dots and ECS on this channel because I just love talking about that stuff so much. But I figured before I do that, I kinda of have to address the elephant in the room mostly about what the heck is going on over at Unity, and is Unity Dots and ECS doomed? Is it going to be canceled next? We're gonna talk about all that stuff in today's video. I do hope you enjoy it. So I guess at the top of this video, it'd probably be a good idea to just to mention a little bit about my affiliation with Unity. Now, despite the hat, I do not work directly for Unity, and I have never been an employee of Unity. Now, however, I have worked with Unity in the past, um, doing some certain promotions and things like that, where they have paid me money to you know, promote things on the channel um, and appear on their Twitch channel and all that stuff. So you know, that's all well and good, and I'm very appreciative of that and you know, happy to have all the opportunities. However, that stuff is by no means anywhere close to my primary source of income. You know, it's just kind of like a nice thing to have that can kind of give me a little bit more extra money to you know invest in the channel like some good camera gear and these like you know crazy lights behind me and a cool you know new logo and all that stuff so it really is just kind of like icing on the cake for me which is you know definitely nice um, also i do want to mention and i did mention this in the video that i talked about you know way back when back when unity actually announced that they were going to go public um, is that I'm actually not an investor in Unity stock. I never have been, and I do not have any intentions of investing in Unity. And that's not to say that I think Unity is a bad investment or something like that. That's just a choice that I've made to not invest in that company that I do talk about on this channel quite frequently, or pretty much every video, I guess. So that's kind of where my relationship with Unity is. You know, basically, I'm you know more than happy to take their money when they want to you know work with me on a specific promotion or want to hire me to do some work or something like that. However, I'm not financially invested in them and I don't have you know, a, a financial vested interest for them to you know, do the best financially that they can. Now, of course, I do want Unity to do very well financially and we'll be getting into some of those reasons later on in this video. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about Unity and kind of what's going on don't really want to go too into detail on this because I think there have been you know a lot of other people that have put out you know really good and comprehensive videos on the whole situation and I don't think that you know this is particularly going to be that type of video I kind of just want to share you know my thoughts on the whole situation and specifically how it relates to dots and ECS because that's what's most relevant to this channel but if you do want to learn a little bit more about kind of what's going on, I would highly recommend you check out Code Monkey's video on this whole situation. He did a very good and comprehensive video um, about everything that was going on. I pretty much echo just about everything that he says. I think out of all the videos that I've seen and articles that I've read, uh, Code Monkey definitely has the most level-headed kind of take on all the situations. But to sum up kind of some of the recent events, you know, extremely, extremely briefly, you know, Unity's stock price has been on a pretty steep decline over the past couple of months. And Unity actually went out publicly and said that they were not going to, you know, lay off a large portion of their staff because of the, you know, stock price and economic impact and all that. And then unfortunately, a couple of weeks later, they actually ended up laying off, you know, over 200 employees from the company. Now, it sounds like some of those people may have gotten actually job offers again back within Unity and some people have been, you know, rehired into different positions, but still just not the, you know, exact best situation to be in, especially when it, you know, the company was kind of indicating that, you know, people were not going to lose their jobs and then some people did end up losing their jobs unfortunately and of course one of the biggest ones is the whole Gagaya project which is something that I know myself and so many other game developers you know all the people at GDC uh, were so excited about just because this is you know Unity actually using their own engine to create what is essentially a production ready product and you know they were actually going to go through the whole process of shipping it putting it on steam and everything like that and then once that was going to be released they're actually going to release the you know full project files for this project along with some learning resources talking about you know why they made some of the certain decisions that they made and it was really just set as this like you know incredible learning resource that so many people have been really looking forward to now unfortunately this entire team got laid off and as such the project basically is canceled it's not going to be released so anyways that was about three weeks ago now and then Last week, Unity actually just announced that it was going to be uh, doing a merger with a company called Iron Source. And, you know, this was a fairly controversial merger for, you know, all sorts of number of reasons. 
Again, not going to get too deep into all this now, um, but it does seem like this company maybe has a little bit of a shady history. And to me, it kind of seems like this deal kind of was pushed through fairly quickly. And I know this particular acquisition was kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back. It seemed that, you know, a lot of people kind of started, you know, coming out and, you know, very vocally saying that they, you know, were really not happy with the direction that Unity was going in. And they're, you know, starting con to consider other engines. And look, I get it. I know it's just a really bad position for so many developers to be in because, you know, game development is, is already stressful enough and you don't need to worry about you know is your tool set going to be you know a viable option for you within the next couple of years so anyways enough about that I think I've talked about that enough let's just kind of talk about you know what I think about unity in general and again what it's looking like for me and dots going forward and all that so I guess I'd just say you know in general you know how am I looking at unity right now I'd say that I'm looking at it cautiously optimistically optimistically because I still think that Unity is a fantastic tool set. You know, you can still make great products in it today. You still be able to make great products tomorrow, next month, next year, and so on. However, I would balance that optimism with a little bit of caution just because, you know, based off of the changes that have been happening at Unity, you know, you never know, you know, when something major could change that maybe actually does impact my day-to-day -day development. So far that I've seen, you know, with any of these changes, you know, while it may not be the best thing, and I don't necessarily agree with, you know, 100% of the way that they've gone about doing everything, it doesn't really affect my day-to-day -day development. I've still been having so much freaking fun working on my existing project right now. This doesn't change Unity's viability as a tool set that can be used to make awesome things. And, you know, if there are people out there who have money and have a need for some cool things to be made, and, you know, you can make those things in Unity, then you as a Unity developer are in a good position to succeed. You know, just because they're making some changes over on their end, it doesn't mean that you can still, you know, not take advantage of the tool sets, at least as of right now, and, you know, build games and other interactive experiences or even build out things for film and TV. And again, going back to more of the optimism, I mean, I've met so many people at Unity and all these people who work there are just fantastic people. They've all got into this industry because they're passionate about games, you know, whether that be developing games, making tools for games, or literally just playing games. I mean, all these people are really, you know, gamers at heart. That's what kind of attracted them to Unity in the first place. They all definitely love what they do and they put so much passion into it. And you can definitely see it in a lot of the, you know, tool sets that are coming out. And especially when they have, you know, interviews with developers and stuff on the channel, you know, kind of showcasing some of the things that they've been working on. I know Unity actually recently did a stream on the Twitch channel where they're talking about some VFX graph stuff um, and just some of the really cool things that they're doing with that. Um, so that's some really cool stuff to see. And, you know, I know all these passionate developers, they want Unity to do well. They want it to be a good game engine. And I did just want to say that I am really hoping for Unity to, to succeed financially. I hope this, you know, merger with Iron Source and some of the other deals that have been made with them, uh, you know, really pays off and that they actually do increase their stock price. Again, not because I'm financially invested in Unity, but I do really want to see them do well because, you know, when we see a company like Unity that, you know, is really strapped with cash, that's when they start doing the cool projects like Gagaya and they start doing this whole, you know, enemies demo and, you know, putting a lot of good resources into, you know, really cool and interesting projects. So I think that, you know, of course, the more money that Unity has, the more opportunities that they're going to be to for them to make really cool stuff that we'll actually see the results of. But then again, balancing that with a little bit of the cautious optimism that I have, you never know when the rug is going to get pulled out under these, you know, really cool projects that people are working on, kind of like what we saw with Gagaya, which now I guess kind of leads me nicely into dots. You know, what is the state of dots looking like right now? You know, am I concerned? You know, are we ever actually going to get to a dots 1.0 release? Um, let's get into that now. So I'd say that again with Dots, it pretty much is the same for my thoughts on Unity in general. I'd say that I'm cautiously optimistic for Dots. Um, again, you know, very optimistic because I know there are so many good developers who are very passionate and excited about Dots. You know, they really understand the data-oriented programming and why it is so important. But again, cautious optimism. We never know if, you know, something, you know, high up above the whole Dots team and everything like that, can just kind of pull the plug on the old, the whole thing. 
Now, the reason that I don't necessarily think that that is going to happen, because I know the CTO of Unity, Joachim Ante, is very heavily involved with the you know, development and production of dots. You'll see him all the time in the forums, you know, asking like very, or answering very in-depth technical questions regarding dots. So he very much knows what's going on. He's passionate about this. So I definitely think that, you know, having the CTO of the company, you know, so on board with this technology, that's definitely going to speak volumes when they're talking about, you know, maybe potential features to cut budgets towards or even just pull all together. Also, another major reason that I'm following, probably more actually on the optimistic side for Dots than the, you know, cautious side, is that the whole Dots teams, they've just seemed to be on such a great stride over the past couple months, you know, since they kind of, you know, re-emerged from the ashes, if you will, um, late last year, when they kind of, you know, started talking about the plans for, you know, rolling out 0.50 and all that. You know, they've been pretty much on point. They hit their release date for 0.50. They also hit their release date for 0.51. Also, it seems like they're still on track for the DOTS 1.0 full release to be rolled out during the 2022 LTS cycle. Um, also, we just see a lot of cool things happening. Like, you know, recently on their Twitch channel, they did a stream with the developers of V Rising, which is a game that was made using DOTS and ECS. And they were, you know, really in depth talking about that stuff. So, you know, definitely cool to see, you know, more production ready games using DOTS and ECS. And that Unity is actually, you know, highlighting this and showcasing it more on their official channels. So that being said, you know, even though I am cautiously optimistic about DOTS, that doesn't change the fact that I think this technology is fantastic. I very much enjoy using it. I'm very happy to be using it as much as I can. So I will continue to use it for as long as I can. And, you know, I'm definitely very much looking forward towards, you know, many features over DOTS 1.0. In fact, that's probably gonna be the next video coming out is talking about some of the features that I'm most excited for in DOTS 1.0. So anyways, that's just about all I have to say on that for now. You know, definitely excited to get back into making more you know, just fun, awesome videos about DOTS and ECS, providing you all with some good learning resources so you can, you know, better improve your data-oriented programming skills using DOTS and ECS. Um, again, having so much fun using this myself, and I really hope that you all can, you know, take advantage of these cool tool sets now. Anyways, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up today's video. If you did enjoy it, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's data-oriented technology stack and their entity component system. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, or even just wanna give me your thoughts about the you know, recent changes happening at Unity, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below or join us over on Discord where we can talk about it a little further. Um, you can just get to it at tmg.dev slash Discord. Anyways, enough yapping for me. Hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.